Yo, Elliot, I recently found a woman I'm talking to has several family members who suffer from mental disorder, like autism and schizophrenia. I have nothing against anyone suffering from any sort of disability, and I most certainly would love my child if they had something like that, if that was the case for them. I do love this woman as she has proven herself of wife worthiness. But a part of me wants to back off because I know certain things run in her family. What are your thoughts? Well, I'll be blunt. My wife comes from a crazy family too. Depression uh, and all kinds of problems, both sides. Both sides of her parents, alcoholism, drug abuse, uh, just all kinds of diabolical disorientation, both her parents. My father, may he rest in peace, passed away. He drank himself to death. Uh, her mother is uh, obstinate in her sins and a very confused and depressed woman has been in and out of uh, hospitals for her. You know, part of the reason why I met my wife is because both her parents, well, her mother got carried away to a mental <laughs> institute. I met my wife, and she, here's a funny thing. I met her, she was a girl in another town. And as far as I was concerned, I was just hooking up with this girl from the town next door. And when the summer was over, she was going to go to her high school. I was going to my school. And pretty much was probably going to be done. Right? I was like, I had, we had our fun. I had it in my mind. It was like, ah, well, she, you know, she's from Freeport. I'm from Baldwin. God is so funny. <laughs> that very summer, she and I started hanging out. Her mom cracked up and got carted off to a mental institute. And she could no longer live in her mother's house. So she had to go live with her father. Her father lived in my town. So she had to change high school. She had to come to my, she had to come to my high school. I think about even when that happened, a part of me was cringing. <laughs> Here I am, 14 years old. I was like, ooh, ooh. And I even was like, I'm going to break up with this girl. What am I going to do? Like, you know, because I had my own other life. I was, playing, I was having this whole, like, extra life with her because this was a girl from another town. <laughs> and then she was coming into my life. And I was like, oh. I'm going to have to make room for this girl in my life, I guess. And apparently I did. I mean, I made all the room for her, obviously. But when I was a kid, I was thinking about that. And I wasn't privy like you were. I wasn't thinking too much. Well, I didn't know I was going to marry her. But I wasn't thinking too much about the fact that she come from a crazy family. So it was, it was her family's very uh, mental problems that made, them, made her come into my life. And so the reason why I tell you that is just to let you know that my wife is the most stable woman I know. <laughs> my woman is stable. That's why I'm a little more unstable than she is. Believe it or not, right? <laughs> I'm sure you believe it. My wife is, she's, I talk all this, you know, alpha male stuff, but my wife is, is a stable rock in my life since I was, I was a kid. I tell you that because she comes from a very unstable family. My wife is a, is a stable structure in my life. She's a stable woman. She's a rational woman. She's a very clear-headed woman. She don't drink or get, she never does drugs, never did drugs. She, in fact, and I, I'm going to put this out there, just I'm telling you about my wife, maybe your girl's the same way. I think... Because she come from such an unstable family with so much mental problems, even her sister and her brother, her whole family got mental problems. Because she come from such a, uh, an unstable environment with unstable people, I think that she takes it to the next level with stability. Because she is holding herself up against the threat of psychological collapse. I call her a compensated oral. My wife is oral. You know, we talk about character structures. The, now, orals, I told you, you know, I'm not going to get into it, character structure. Orals, you know what orals are. The oral are people who are very friendly, who, want, who just want to be loved, and they want to love, you know, but they have their hang-ups, too. They're usually very weak-willed. They're also, you know, a lot of times very lazy. But there's a special kind of oral called a compensated oral. And a compensated oral can feel their oral collapse in them. They could feel that they could, like her father, both of her parents were oral, her father collapsed into alcoholism. His whole body is collapsed. Just the way he would, he would carry himself. 
<laughs> and I'll get into the kids in a moment since that's your concern. You know. And her mother collapsed, collapsed into mental problems. Her mom was a heavy alcoholic. I mean, both of her parents collapsed into their orality. My wife and her sister, they collapsed. Even their bodies are collapsed. They collapsed bodies. My wife, you ever check my wife out? She got upright posture. My wife got one of the, if you check my wife, especially this middle-aged woman, and she's around a bunch of other women, you'd be like, wow, this woman, she got, she's standing up tall. So compensated oral uh, is, is supporting themselves against the threat of collapse. And it's part of the reason, and it, you know, sometimes she gets anxious when there's chaos because she, you know, that's her, her, her structure is, is such that she's constantly fighting it. She wants to keep stable against chaos. And so and I'm telling you, you know, God bless, God bless me and my marriage and my wife. And I'm sure that she, because of the way she is and the way I am, we compliment each other. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I, you know, I'm lucky. And I think a lot of you guys, it's tough because you don't find that person that compliments. So anyway, she, you know, she compliments me in that way. And that's why we're such a great couple. But I tell you this, I'm going to repeat myself again, because it, you don't know what she's going to be like, even though she comes from a crazy family. And you don't even know if, like in my situation, she's going to be super stable because of the craziness in her family. I'm crazy. My wife is not crazy. I'm crazy. And so she, her stability has been helpful to me through all this time. I just couldn't even figure it when I was younger too because I was a beta male and I was all looking for pleasure and I was out there looking for, I was being unstable, right? Like most young men, right? I'm looking for fun, I'm looking for pleasure, I'm looking for experiences. And no matter what, I turn around and this girl's still here. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you, you ain't gonna go away? Sometimes I laugh with her. We'll just be laying, you know, we laying or we're just enjoying ourselves. I'm looking at her and I, and I say to her, you that same girl? Like, you that same girl? You that same girl? Like, I, I'm in awe sometimes. I'm like, Are you that same girl? You've been here the whole time? You so stable that you hung out with me, you endured all your crazy family members, and here you are. And we got crazy kids. So you say autism and schizophrenia. My kids are not perfect. And some of it I could see coming from our family members. I see some of, some of her family members' tendencies in my children, right? And I see some of mine, which, it, which ain't good either. But there's a reason why God gave them to us. Let's say you do marry this girl. And let's say that you find that her wife-worthiness is justifiably proven and you marry her for all the right reasons, which it seems like you do. You want to love her. She's proven herself. She might be great. And you have children. And the children end up showing traits that are from the family members. This is how I've reconciled it for myself, right? <laughs> so sometimes I'm just con I'm consoling myself with this stuff. So you guys, you know, make with it what you will. I got to tell myself the right story so that I can endure my life. <laughs> if it helps you, great, right? Whatever. God has given us these children to heal those generational wounds. Her father had some kind of autism, Colleen's father. And her grandmother was a schizophrenic. And I want to say she committed suicide. Clinically, clinically crazy, her, her father's mother. And of course, I told you about her mother's side. So I didn't think about any of this before I married Colleen. I was, you know, I was 23 years old. Nobody talked to me the way I talked to you guys. My, I think my dad may have warned me, but I didn't want to listen to him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my dad warned me. My dad was like, was like uh, you sure you want to marry this girl? Look at her family. He said that once, and I was offended. I was like, how, you know, in my mind, I was like, dad, leave me alone. You don't know. I'm in love. So maybe I would have listened to my dad. I wouldn't be in the good situation I am right now. Right. So I don't I don't know. I don't know anything. 
I look back at my life sometimes and I'm like, I have been carried by the grace of God this whole time. And I didn't even know it. That's why I owe him so much these days. I, I, I think David says in his Psalms that I'll speak your name to the people, right? If you just carry me in your grace, that's it. I owe him. So carried me in so many ways that I didn't even know. So I say, and I'm not telling you what to do. I am pro-marriage, traditional marriage. I am pro-family. I want to see marriages and family work again. I get excited when you guys say I want to get married. I know most of the guys in the red pill community, they're so against marriage, and I understand why. And I'm not, I don't say they're wrong, but I'm hopeful, right? Hopefully ignorant, but I do have a track record. I come from a good family. I'm building a good family. It can be done. So, so hopefully my hope becomes your hope. I hope you can marry her. Hope you marry her. I hope you have a she becomes a great wife. I hope you have a great family. And listen, fellas, there's going to be bumpy roads. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be stuff that's tough. That's how growth happens. Even in a marriage, I got to say my marriage for the most part is smooth sailing. We don't have very many problems at all, me and my wife. <laughs> Our kids offer us challenges. So I think that's a part of God's grace in my life. He was like, I want to make you guys stable so that you can deal with these unstable kids. <laughs> but whatever instability needs to be confronted in your marriage, either it be from her or from the children, that is the very means by which you achieve your sanctification. Marriage is teamwork to get to heaven. Robert Bly says it in Iron John. He says, in the marital union, you each give each other the leash to your uh, beast. He calls it the um, uh, beast of the netherworld. So I give her the leash of my beast, and she give me the leash to her beast. If some woman give you the leash to her beast, what do you think you're going to get? Well, you get all the beautiful and the terrible things that come with a beast. The beast is where we have sex. Rational man don't have sex. <laughs> Rational men don't have sex. Sex is stupid. <laughs> Except for procreation. Just think about this, fellas. Sex is stupid. Sex is totally irrational. Sex don't make any sense. What, am I, what do we do? If you even just, I know pornography, you know, we get off on watching it. But if you just like, imagine you're Dr. Spock from a different planet, right? And you're purely rational. And you come and you see people having sex. You'd be like, what are these animals doing? <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> Sorry. But I think about these things. I'm like, yeah. So when you hand each other each other's lease, you get the sex. But you also get... You get the nastiness that comes with that. That's why divorce is such a scourge on our culture. You sign up to carry that person's beast into the netherworld. You also get to tame that beast. You get to love that beast, right? You get to enjoy that beast too. There's a, there's something a little there's something a little exciting about that crazy beast. My wife, I told her from the beginning, she knows me. I'm a beast. I told her from the beginning, it's gonna be a wild ride with me because I'm I'm unstable. I'm crazy. Her beast is pretty calm. <laughs> she got an easy beast. Well, that's why I got a strong woman to handle my beast. Right? I couldn't. Most women couldn't handle my beast. Most women can't handle my beast. And, my, and I, it's funny because my parents are the same way. My dad is a beast, and my aunt used to say to my mother. Another woman couldn't handle Edmund. Another woman couldn't handle Edmund. I think it's just a grace. It's a, it's a generational grace that I think I've been given. But at the same time, my friend, be open to the potential of having generational curses that you need to, you need to deal with. And you love that woman and you love that children. And you receive those challenging children if they come out autistic or whatever as a means for your own salvation, as a penance for your sins, and, and, a, and a, a means for mortification, right? For, for, for building virtue. That's really what it is. 
Let those children help you build virtue. Maybe you do end up with retarded children. Sometimes I think my kids are retarded. <laughs> they're not, but they're crazy. And sometimes I have to remind myself, God gave me these kids, not just because he trusted that he entrusted me with them, knowing that I could work towards healing of the generational wounds, but also he knows that I get to get, be worked on as a result of working on these children. I, I get to learn how to bite my tongue sometimes. I get to learn how to go with the flow sometimes. I learn how to speak up and confront and build boundaries when I know it's going to be challenged sometimes. I had to learn all these things. A lot of my red pill, so-called red pill knowledge that I offer you guys is because of my experience. I had to grow up. I had to grow up to become a good father. I'm still learning. You don't get that kind of growing up if you, if you eschew marriage and family because it might be too challenging and be a playboy your whole life, right? I'm going to have sterile transient sex for my whole life. Do me. Make money and have sex. That's good. Gay, literally, that's the homosexual lifestyle, right? Is sterile, transient sex and having fun, doing you and being proud about it. So a lot of the men who promote this stuff in the, in the red pill community don't realize that they're acting like homosexuals. A real man is willing to put himself to the flame. Not to get burned, and I get it, the laws are stacked against us. I have something to say about that too, but it's not the point for this video. Not to get burned, but to be like that iron in the fire that gets molded into the sword. Do you ever know how a sword gets that sharp? The swordsmith got to put that iron in the fire and beat it up. Ting, 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 that red hot piece of iron. That's what marriage can do for you if you have the right mindset about it. And you need a woman that has that same mindset about it also. You, and vetting these women not easy. But you have, a, you have to have a woman. You got to, it can't be all roses and ponies when you're talking to your woman about marriage and how it's going to be a, a fairy tale. She need, women need to be aware that if they want marriage and family, they got to be prepared for death. Death do us part. You can't fall out of love. I see men doing that now too. And that's the height of effeminacy. Fell out of love. It don't work that way, fellas. <laughs> then don't do it. Then don't do it. Monk or marriage. Then just be a monk. So that's all I got to say about that, dude. Good question. I wish you the best. I pray for you and your family. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind. It has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.